Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of the Terra Pura Non-League Show. We're celebrating our first birthday, so we thought we'd put a show together highlighting the goals of the year that's been. Our very first game took place at the Sports Park home of Peacehaven and Telscombe and they were playing against Haywards Heath Town that certainly didn't lack any incident. So we're about 19 minutes gone into this game as the ball heads towards the spot. It's headed and it's a goal! Headed in from about three yards out. They have been the better team. They should be behind, but they have got the goal that their play. So on the 20th minute, the goal is scored. And it's lofted into the penalty spot and headed again by Cooper and again into the back of the net. He was left completely unmarked on the edge of the six yard box. And he had the simple task of heading the ball into the right hand side low. The keeper could do nothing about it. And it's Peacehaven and Telscombe nil, Haywards Heath Town two. Martin combine. And a little chip ball in, and there's a chance, it's a goal! A fantastic finish from Ford. And right on the stroke of half-time, Peacehaven and Telscombe get the goal. Been intense, it's been a bit crazy at times, but it is Peacehaven 1, Haywards Heath Town 2. Maybe that goal on the stroke of half-time will give Peacehaven some hope going into the second half. It's a ball over the top and he could be in. He's in here. It's a real chance for Ford for 2-2! Two -two. The ball's up to Ford. Ford. Great return. Goes for shot. Gets the flex. He's in! Will it go down as Ford's goal? It was his shot. This seemed to be going wide. It was deflected by the substitute Richmond. They'll have an argument in the dressing room about whose goal that was. Peacehaven 2. Haywards Heath 2. Can clear. And that's a rough challenge from the Grange. And he's going to have memories of his red card here in the FA Cup. Treatment is needed. The referee's reaching into his pocket. And it is a red card. So a comeback, four goals and the setting off went a bad way to kick off the series. We'll see more from Jake the Grange later in the show as well. Our next trip was to Woodside Road where two stunning strikes were enough for Hendon to see off a spirited Worthing performance. Hendon has a man on, his ball back to Wills is intercepted and a chance from Lee, shoots and it's in the back of the net from 30 yards, Lee picked up on the mistake from Hendon and curled the ball into the left hand corner, there was nothing Banks could do about it, the Hendon bench celebrate, it has to be said it's no more than Hendon deserve, he's going to come back out to Wills, he thought about having a shot, Instead, sets it back to Hendon, who tips it. The keeper's mouth is in! Oh, what a calamity for the goalkeeper! But Will Hendon gets the goal with cheeky chip that looked like it had nothing on it. Goes over the keeper, who got two hands, but spilled it into the back of his own net. The keeper will have nightmares about that. Build a tack down this left hand side for sale out, turn. There's loads of space out on this left. And it's Murphy. And it's a brilliant finish from Murphy. He had acres of space on that left hand side. It seemed like he had an ace to pick his spot. And he did pick his spot. It was at the top left hand corner once again. It's Worthing 1, Hendon 2. We stay then with the artificial pitches to Culver Road and see Lansing in action against Eastbourne Town. And it's Bowell, the left back, who's got up. And he'll get there, and it's Bowell into the area. He plays it across for Archibald! And that's a goal for Eastbourne Town. You can't say they don't deserve it. They've had the chances, they've had the better of the play, and finally they've got a goal. Archibald now with the ball over the top for Capon to chase. And it's a risky tackle, but the ball works its way across, and it's tapped in at the six yard box from number seven, Jason Taylor. On, it's a Lansing. second goal for Eastbourne Town. 
and all the hard work of Callum Fiddler in this half, some great saves. He's left undone. Fair, does really well to win the ball. He's got Finney out on their left. Finney just on the ledge, edge of the penalty area. It's Fair on the edge. His shot is in! And a goal back for Lansing. And his shot was low and hard and curled beyond the keeper's reach into the corner. Game on, Lansing one, Eastbourne Town two. And Kaplan plays the ball into the area. And it breaks. And it's headed across goal. It's got to be a turn. It's a goal from Fair. It's 2-2. Two -two. Eastbourne Town players looking towards the linesman. This time the flag doesn't go up. The ball broke to Fair from two yards out. He had the simplest of tasks to put the ball in the back of the net. And from 2-0 down, Lansing a level. It's Lansing 2, Eastbourne Town 2. Goals were very much of the flavour for the non-league show and we were treated to a five-goal thriller on our first trip to the enclosed ground as Whitehawk and East Thurrock put on a show. And there's lots of space, too much space surely for Marlow. He evades the challenge, a shot for Ryan, a goal, an early goal and the captain Sam Higgins has scored for East Thurrock. Chaos in the box there for Whitehawk. There was acres of space and from six yards out, it was Sam Higgins, the captain, who curled the ball into the right-hand corner and into the back of the net. It's clean through on goal. It's a real chance. One on the keeper. There's the dummy. There's the turn. There's the finish. There's the goal. It's Joe Gardner played through. He had the calmness and composure to round the keeper and slot the ball into the empty net. It's an absolute disaster as far as Whitehawk are concerned. East Thurrock United won't care one jot. It's Whitehawk nil. East Thurrock United two. Right with the shot. And Ray with the goal. Through the wall into the bottom right hand corner. Tom Wright was the man as soon as the free kick was given who wanted the ball. The White Hawk players look on, dejected. Oh, it's a lovely reverse pass there. And Abdullah's got the ball back with a chance to shoot. And a goal! Abdullah it was who started the move with a lovely little reverse pass. The ball broke back and he drove into the area and curled the ball past the keeper. Into the far corner. Whitehawk one, East Thurrock United three. The ball breaks over and Hill has a chance here. Hill can poke it in. Hill does put it in. A disaster at the back for East Thurrock. And now we have game on. It's not always been plain sailing for the team. Severe weather at Lewis disrupted our first half coverage of their game against Molsey. Our cameras did recover in time, however, to catch the second half. And unfortunately for the home side, Molsey's come back in an almost unplayable condition. And that ball is over the top and control from Lodge and a shot from Lodge and a goal from Ashley Lodge brings Molesley back into this game. And there's a chance now for Rose. Beats a man, cuts the ball back, there's a real chance for a shot, it's blocked, it's in, it's put in the back of the net by Windsor from six yards out. And from 2-0 down, Molesley a level. Terra Pura non-league show is not just about the action though, we met some interesting faces along the way. Well the Brown Street Club of Corringham Thames side actually sponsors one of the children's teams with the club. I believe you follow them home in a way, is that correct? Yes, so I haven't missed a game this season. Um, but what I've noticed here, I don't know if we can get this on camera, um, we've got a badge here that says Certified Sargal out. Um, that seems a little bit of an interesting badge, could you tell us a little bit about that? Well it was a group of us went by train to Dulwich Hamlet last season. Um, we had a photograph taken on Stanfordly Hope Station with their scarves and all the rest of it. And somebody posted it on Facebook. And apart from the comments like, all the care homes in Corringham were empty for the weekend, somebody put up saga layouts and it stuck. <laughs> we're joined here by Norman, John, Don and Peter, the official Sutton United supporters club. And uh, they brought some extra things with them today, the Sutton United fans. Uh, yeah, made some good noise, we'll be hearing later on today. We've got a massive game coming up on Tuesday. Are you focused on today's game? Very much focused on today's game. We want to do well, we want to get to Wembley. The unfortunate thing is we got three or four guys on the last uh, yellow card and we can't afford to lose it for Tuesday. Be interesting to see how he balances the team, but we're confident. It's been a mixed uh, bag of form for you guys this season, obviously stepping up uh, division. Um, away from home you've struggled, why do you think that might be this season? 
Um, probably something to do with playing on grass instead of playing on artificial. You know, in, uh, we've been uh, playing artificial pitch at home and I think that does favour us slightly. But uh, yeah, we haven't done very well away from home. But mid-table, so I've worked my way along the line, uh, mid-table, um, cup form's been great, league form can't complain. Uh, what's the best that you can hope for this season? The best we can hope for is to stay mid-table in the National League and get through to the next round of the FA Cup. Behind us, the score, watch out for some balls there hitting us. Um, what's the feeling inside the dressing room? Three points, I think, today. I've got to be honest, yeah. It's, it's been... Um... <laughs> <laughs> As we say that. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, it should be a good game. In November, we had our very first evening game with Worthing against Haven and Waterlooville. And that was followed by our first thrashing and hat trick of the season as Shoreham put five past Arundel. It's set back and put in. There's a chance of free man at the back post and a shot. Yeah! And a goal for Barker! It was a simple throw in that was whipped in to the back post. It, there was no Worthing man there. But Barker was. And again, it falls at the back post of that man, Barker. And it's Rutherford, and it's 2 0! Yeah! Rutherford, it is the man who gets the goal. It's Worthing nil, having it at Waterlooville, too. But Omar with a chance to pull it on back. 2 1! Worthing needed that. He's driving into the air, he's got support over on the far side. The ball, it's a free header and a goal! The opening goal from number seven, Richard Greenfield. It was a great ball through from Burton. O'Toole was onto it, he was onside. He lofted the ball over to the back post and there was that man, Greenfield, to head in to the near post. That's a real chance again for O'Toole. He's one-on-one with the keeper, he runs, keep, he's brought down. There has to be a penalty. It is a penalty. He takes a run up. And it's low to the bottom left-hand side. It's Shoreham two, Arundel nil. And there's space over on that far side. A deep cross in, O'Toole's free in the middle, it's three nil! A free header from six yards and the cartwheel celebration from O'Toole gets his second inside three minutes. It was Dreyer the man who put the ball in on a plate for him and the big man up top comes up with a big goal and at the near post a free header and it's in bundled in the keeper couldn't deal with it another ball through this time O'Toole's definitely onside O'Toole is this going to be the hat trick it's him and the keeper it's 5-0 it's three goals for that man. Tall on side. Ran onto the through ball, into the area. He's forced himself probably wider than he'd liked, but drew the keeper and passed the ball past him into the far corner. We'd see those two teams play against each other late in the season with a very different outcome. Next up was our first trip to the Green Elephant Stadium where Billericay Town were the visitors. Our first game with two penalties. Getting the ball over to the chance of chasing. That's a rash challenge, and the referee has given a penalty. He has given the penalty. It was a stupid challenge from the number six, Danny Fitzsimmons. And it's low to the keeper's left. And it is Dan Pierce, the man who's got the goal. Burgess Hill Town 1, Billericay Town 0. Work back, that's poor, but it. Oh, lovely cheeky little back up and a great turn, great strength there, and a shot, and it's a save, and it's tapped in. It was a younger the man who did the skills in the box, and then it was finished off brilliantly. Bravillo, he was following in, but the credit should go to the number nine, Jonah Younger. It was his shot that was well saved, but they could do nothing. No men in orange were there for the rebound. Bravillo was, and it's Burgess Hill Town 2, Billericay Town 0. 
it's half oh and that's going to be a penalty it is oh schoolboy defending Billericay Town have a chance to pull one back and they do the keeper dived to his left the ball went down the middle and Billy Bricknell has got Billericay Town back into this game January saw our first FA Trophy game and it was an absolute cracker as Worthing took on Sutton United before we returned to the Southern Coronation League with Haywards Heath Town and their feisty trip to Lansing. Little did we know at this stage the exciting conclusion to how this league would turn out. And eventually it's cleared doors with a little flick on and Bugill and Worthing got two on two here. There's a man on the far side. But Bugill gets a goal! Attack. And for all the will in the world, it looked like he was going to play it out to that right hand side, but he took a shot from the edge of the area and it went into that bottom corner, evading the dive of Ross Warner. Oh, you go. Score for Worthing. 1 0. Hooks the ball forward, Dundas up underneath that. McAllister gets his flick on. And they're set back and a shot is an equaliser. And Deacon. It's the man, back out on the right hand side, he drifted into the middle of the park, a setback by the substitute BMU, and strike from the edge of the area in the bottom right hand corner. Crosses deep, Fagan, was underneath it, it nearly broke for McAllister, it didn't, Monacana keeps it alive, McAllister and it's a chance and it's a goal! It's 2-1 to Sutton. Doors. Doors still gets the ball across. It's free for Lemon. It's a goal. 2 2. Lemon, the substitute, was there on Mark Six Shards out. It's Worthing 2, Sutton United 2. Ball. It's dropped and bundled in by Graves. It looked like the keeper to Cruz was going to cluck that in the air. Instead, he fumbled it, and Graves was there to tap in from two yards out. And it's Lansing nil, Haywards Heath Town one. But now Lank can get that clearance. Got McCready free in space, and that is a shocking challenge from Chadwick. And there's some masters off the ball, but it's a chance for two. And McCready, it's got to be. It is 2-0 on the break. McCready and Saunders work it on the break after Lane was put through. And Howard Heath Town have won this game. The title race was hotting up and Shoreham were to travel to Peacehaven and Telscombe that featured a hat-trick from Dreyer. Our first missed penalty and another sending off for, yep, you guessed it, Jake LaGrange. Dry it. Nice quick change of feet. Dry it. Goes for goal! And it's in! The opening goal of the game. Scored by number 11, Dre Dryer. A shot from about 25 yards. It was low to the near corner. The keeper got a hand to it but couldn't keep it out. And it's Peacehaven and Telscombe nil. Shoreham one. Dryer forces the error at O'Toole. Back to Dryer. Dryer is fouled, is he surely? And the referee points to the spot. It's a penalty for Shoreham. O'Toole. It's hit the bar. It's surely brought down, but O'Toole gets the ball across at the near post. And then the far post, and it's a goal from Dryer again. His second of the game. O'Toole with the cross to the back post. It evaded everyone except Dryer, who came in and then smashed it in from three yards. Hey. OK, free kick ripped in. And one of the substitutes with his first touch is a goal! In fact, it was Allen who's got the goal. So great composure, a little back heel. And then curled the ball past the keeper and Peacehaven from nowhere are back in the game. And Kean can go into the box, so Tool's taking the pack back. That's a push, and that's the second penalty for Shoreham. Lagrange, the man who pushed him over.
And it's a red card. The Grange has been given a red card, deemed to be a last man. Dreyer for the hat trick. And it is 3 1. Firmly dispatched to the keeper's left. So after that minute of solo drama, 3 1 is the score to Shoreham. Next on our journey, we travel to Lewis and Whitehawk with contrasting results for our local teams. And Lewis have a chance to clear this three men up. And one of them here is Hammond. His ball through. And a real chance for Rocker. He slides it past the keeper. Rocker again! It's a goal! Swift break from Lewis, who was a chipstead corner. But Freeman it was who won the ball, got it clear down the left-hand side for Hammond. Hammond played a lovely ball through. Oka, one and one, his first shot, come off the keeper, right back to him. And he taps it into the back of the net. And nine minutes gone, it's Lewis one, Chipstead nil. Whips in. And swings one's goal, and in! The back of the net. It's that man again, Oku with the goal. He was there to turn home from seven yards. The keeper's beaten. He can't quite believe it. But Lewis doubled their lead. intercepted and that's a two-footed challenge there from Greaves who's already been booked don't remember in the first half and it's a second yellow I'm certain and captain is off with a two-footed challenge. Taken quickly to Felix. He gets a cross in. And a free header! And they're back in it! It's Cumber with a free header from six yards out. The quick corner taken. And the ten men are right back in it. And there's space here if Drury can find Shields. And Shields comes into the box, chance for two, it is two. A simple ball over the top, headed on by Kedwell. Played through to Shields, and he gets his goal. Low to the keeper's right, into the corner of the net. It's Whitehawk nil, Ebsfleet United two. Our bad luck charm and Worthing continued as they suffered a 3-1 defeat on our return to Woodside Road, and a double sending off. A result that was echoed by Lansing as they hosted Pagham. Ball is clear, that's easy for Harold. And there's space for Shulton, who evades the challenge and gets his shot away! And what a goal that is! 1-0 to Enfield Town. Shulton evaded the challenge of O'Neill and hit a delightful shot that swerved past the keeper into the corner. Going up against Boiling. Going into the area, getting his cross. And he's broken in, it's a goal! Straight from kickoff, pretty much. A goal, and this time it's Crook. A cross. Was it, took a slight deflection on its way through, and then found unmarked from about eight yards. The number eight, Billy Crook, and he had the simple task of tapping the ball home. He fires it in, and it's in for number three. Oliyid, siding home. And Enfield Town respond to their midweek defeat very positively here. Drag back turn. He's got three yellow shirts around him and wins a free kick for his team. And then he reacts furiously. And it's all kicks off in the worst possible way here. And that's a red card straight away for the low knee from Brighton. 
and a second red card. Hopkinson gets the cross in and it's a free header and that's 3-1 and Bowers with his 20th goal of the season gets Worthing back in it battling with Berry he gets that ball clear Bennett he's got pressure but turns brilliantly and then long ball over the top looking for Lewis Finney he's going to put the defender of pressure he's going to get there first and Lewis Finney with a real chance for Lansing he's got a man over him fair he rounds the keeper it's 1-0 Lansing lead Lewis Finney with a breakaway goal from a Pagan corner they swept to the other end Bennett showing great composure to come inside finding the ball down the touchline Finney took his time sent the keeper the wrong way and tapped it into the net 1-0 Lansing. Yeah. Overton nipped in ahead and Murphy, the danger man, can play it back through to him. He's onside, he's got the fullback, he shrugs him off. And it's a chance for the equaliser and it is 1-1. You can't say it hasn't been coming. Overton picked up the ball, played a lovely 1-2 with Scott Murphy before calmly slotting the ball past the keeper. It's no more than they deserve. It's Lansing 1, Pagan 1. Murphy stands over the kick and whips it in and it's turning and it's Davidson in fact it's the fullback Cox that got the final touch and it's 2-1 to Pagham ball whipped in low took a flick off of Davidson and then tapped in by the fullback Cox The ball in the corner. And he finds a substitute run with a lovely back heel. And that's a calm finish. And that's a quite brilliant goal from the substitute. Matt Ryan with a finish. Beautiful back heel from Crouch. Following excellent work in the corner from Overton. Time for some more fan interactions now featuring the young and the not so young. I'm now joined by one of the youngest Whitehawk fans, Lottie. Uh, how old are you, Lottie? Seven. Seven. And what I can't help but notice is that you seem to have a drum there. Are you going to play that today? Yes. So what's special about today's game? Why have you got a drum today? Um, be because someone in, someone in gave me it to play for the matches when I come. Perfect. So, Lottie, one final thing I want to ask you. What do you think the score is going to be today? One. Two one. Do you get to Whitehawk? Pardon? To, with Whitehawk to win? Yes. Perfect. All right. Well, Lottie, do you want to give us a quick bang on your drum, see how it sounds? There it is, the drum of Whitehawk winning 2 1. You heard it here first with Lottie. I play cribbage in their Chesham house down South Street, Lansing, who support Lansing. One of the chap who runs helps to run it, it's David. Uh, they're, old, they're all older people down at RBS, yes. all over retirement age. Yes. Well, given the results this season, do you make yeah. a good lace up? Well, they don't pay enough. <laughs> 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 but otherwise, I don't know, we'll be here every, week, every home game. Uh, so, Derek, uh, this season is completely different. Last year, you were relegated last year on goal difference. This season, flying high. Uh, what's been the big turnaround for you guys? Well, I think we've gone more local with more local players. So, we're hoping that's going to see us through. Um, at the moment, it's paying dividends. We're up there on the top end. That's where we wanted to be. Hello and welcome back. We're here with Shoreham's SAS. Yes, it's the supporters, Susie and and Sheila, uh, they've been coming for generations uh, since the 30s, is that right? No, not quite myself, but my family, <laughs> yes, they have. Yeah, my mum and dad's house, which is just across the road there, was used as a changing room in the early days, so we all had to keep out the front room while it was going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's a family show, it's a family show. They're a good team to support, and everyone's so friendly in, in the club, and yeah, they always greet you, and it's lovely but I love it, getting a few away games. And I work with a bunch of guys that all talk about football, so I might as well get involved and join in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't help but notice a little drink in here. Uh, have you got some kind of tradition that goes on with games? Uh, yeah, it's a double Southern Comfort when I get here and a Bovril and a packet of crisps at half-time. So that's been working this season quite well, hasn't it? And last season and the season before. <laughs> 
Dulwich Hamlets were the visitors as we tried our luck once again with Worthing. Spoiler alert, it did not end well for the home team. Then we see Lansing and Arundel play out a very entertaining game. Cross Heath, only a far away as Carew. Wills puts him under pressure. Mr. Kadja back to Carew, he gets his cross in. Mr. Kadja and a shot, and that can you meet with a goal inside a minute of the second half. Dulwich take the lead, and Worthing's defensive play has been undone. The ball broke through, and a fine finish into the corner of the net from Makanyemi. And that's his sixth goal in five appearances. It's Worthing nil, Dulwich Hamlet one. And Biggs to Biggs. And ball through for the on-running Jenkins, and Jenkins takes a touch across. Jarvis this time, surely it is for Arundel. Again, it looked like he scuffed his effort, but there was just enough on it to take it past to Cruz's reach and trickle into the back of the net. And a quick break from Arundel sees them take the lead. It's Lansing nil, Arundel one. Facing him up, but he finds Finney. A couple of little one-twos and Berry's got possession for Lansing in the middle. Finney's allowed to turn now. Slides a little ball through for Williamson. This could be an instant reply. And it is 1-1. One, one. That's the kind of response you want when you go a goal down. Lovely slotted through ball from Finney. And Williamson took a touch and slotted past the keeper, Fernandez. Elliot Finney of time and he's got space to bring the ball forward and pick out his cross and it's going to break here and it's going to be 2-1 Berry and a quick turnaround here from Lansing with two goals in three minutes Big's got a foot in Berry now picks it up Fenton a little one-two with Williamson can he get his cross in instead he checks back but here's space for Berry. He did and gets his cross in and Finney with the header and that's three! It was too easy. Too much time to pick the cross from Berry and too much space in the box for Finney and his header was into the corner back from where it came and that's 3-1. So I'm here with a couple of Hillians, uh, in fact, family Hillians, so father and son, Andy and Aaron. Um, how long have you been coming down here? Uh, about four seasons now. So uh, lived in Burgess Hill all my life. I used to come down when I was a youngster, about 16, but uh, it's only the last four years that I've had the opportunity to come down and bring my son down so he can enjoy it as well. And you say enjoy, have you been enjoying it? I have very much so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Good football for the standards, yeah. Uh, Good players as well, yeah, very good, yeah, very enjoyable. Happy day, so you didn't come on the team bus? We did not come on the team bus. <laughs> no. Not officially in the squad, no. No, no. no. <laughs> we might be able to get in the team actually at the moment, but you never know. I've been following them since way back in the 60s, so um, yeah, it's not, not great at the moment, but um, hopefully for a good couple of uh, results coming up and we, yeah, we can pull out, I think. Well, it's important, this is sort of the first of a double header in two games in nine days. Yeah. And this could shape the season, maybe. Well, I hope it'll have a lot to do with it. Now, after the uh, the last, well, seven matches without um, without a win, well, we could do with a serious uh, injection of good luck. Absolutely, no, it's all good. So you've been in the 60s, so you've seen the highlights of so FA Trophy those two years in a row. Uh, what, how far away is this team from from that team back in the late 90s? Um, well, it seems to be it's, it's way different. I think we were we had a bit of a taste of you know full time professional football. I think for a while, so. But, you know, we, um, it's about supporting a team, going through the good times and the bad times. The good times are even better when you've had a few bad times, so fingers crossed. Uh, Stuart, but you wouldn't come and chat to us alone. You brought a friend with you. Yeah, I was a bit shy, so I brought my other chairman, which is Ralph Prodger. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're both happy owners now, Shaw and Football Club. Whitehawk and Burgess Hill Town were both struggling in their respective leagues, but both got three points when our cameras took a respective visit to their games against Bishop Stortford and Kingstonian. Okay. 
Paul Lynn knows to be in there. It seemed like he was held off. And it is a penalty. It looked like he was being held. And we just can't believe it, but he was pulling on the shirt. Steps up. And it's straight down the middle of the nets. And Whitehall have a valuable goal here in their fight for survival. Southern from the penalty spots. It's Whitehawk 1, Bishop Stortford 0. Keeper will be kicking himself. If he stays still, he would have easily saved that, you feel. Corner whipped in. Header out! And it's in! Oh, in the back of the net! It's Sam Fisk with the goal inside a minute. Or did it take a touch from Lucas Rodriguez? I think the way they're celebrating, I think it was his flick inside the six yard box, but it was Fisk's initial header from the corner. And what a start for the Hillians. They've taken the lead inside a minute here. Yes. Burgess Hill Town 1, Kingstonian 0. It's all right. It's Rodriguez. You can get the cross in. And it, it's in! I'm not sure how, but it's stuck in. It's an own goal, I think, from O'Leary. This seemed to go towards the back post again. And it came off the defender and into the back of the net. And much like Kingstonian's equaliser, Burgess Hill Town have got a goal from nothing. Next up, we have a top of the table clash between Shoreham and Haywards Heath Town. Shoreham had at one point had a 10 point lead over their rivals and was sitting three ahead of them going into this crucial game. Signing along with Kieran Pamant from Pagan, but there's a ball over the top and a chance for McCready early on. He's through on goal here. McCready. And he's in the back of the net, an early goal for Hayward Heath Town. He held off the challenge of Pearson and passed the keeper, Josh Hayburn. It's a dream start for the visiting team. They've taken the lead here. And it's Trevor McCready. He scored yet again, as he did in the reverse fixture. And it's another early goal and a perfect start for Haywards Heath Town. It's Shoreham nil, Haywards Heath Town 1. Shoreham taking chances now, leaving three men up. So the ball's whipped in. And it's a, gone all the way through and in! It's gone all the way in from the fullback, Weston! It looked like the chance was over when Simpson missed his header. But it ghosted past everyone. And Haywards Heath Town have a precious second goal. It's Shoreham nil, Haywards Heath Town 2. The 10 men have doubled their lead. It's whipped in underneath the keeper and it flaps at it. It's kept alive. Shelley, 2-1. Back in it. The keeper flap didn't grab hold of it. It was kept alive. Back to Shelley. We're into the last five minutes. You be sure there's going to be a fair amount of stoppage time as well. Simpson makes a nuisance of himself. He chose to lob the keeper, does he? Oh, what an effort from Simpson. It's 3-1 on the break. The whole squad have come out to celebrate with him and that was a moment of magic from the big man up to the substitute, Malford Simpson. Didn't seem anything on and he flicked the ball up over the top of the keeper. We've seen plenty of goals and some good ones too, but none of them will rival what you're about to see from Glenn Southern of Whitehawk with the perfect injury time equaliser. Then comes back towards Lucien. And then across from Monlui, important for Mamasuti. Is he going to break here for Banton? 1 0 St Alban City. A mix up at the back, they didn't get the ball clear. And Banton was on hand to drag the ball back and pull it into the empty net. It's not the start that Whitehawk wanted. It's gone underneath the keeper, he comes, gets a fist to it, broken to Southern, near to the area! I say, what a goal! Southern from the edge of the area. Rifles of volley into the top corner. He celebrates with the fans. What an important goal that might be for the survival of Whitehawk. A 91st minute goal. And my well, they celebrate behind that goal. Our final two games of the season focused on Shoreham's push for the title. Win them both and the title would have been theirs. 
Remember Arundel earlier in the show? Well, they had something to say about the outcome of this season. And they've taken it quickly and Pamant's got space and he drops a shoulder and goes. And is this the chance that Shoreham need? Pamant's still going, Pamant, and it's past the keeper and in. And that is a vital goal for Shoreham. Pamant, it took the free kick quickly. He turned and went at the defence, a drop of the shoulder. And it's just past the keeper. Maybe he could have done better. Shoreham won't care one bit. They've taken the lead here. It's Lansing nil, Shoreham won. What's up, Lansing? That's Pamant's 27th league goal of the season. He's tied now with O'Toole. And what a crucial goal that could be. So at this stage of the season, it's the points that matter and, and you've got the three points today. Yeah, three points obviously massive today. The disappointment of last week, I think you could tell in just that little bit of luck in front of goal. I said to him at half time, start of the season, we probably would have been two or three nil up and it's we're comfortable, but it just wouldn't go in, would it? You know, he was just the wrong side, keeping make some saves and you think, oh yeah, we're, we're missing from the six yard box. It was just a we just had to, you know, I said to him, we're in that little bit of a rut at the minute. For whatever the reason, it's just it's just come upon us. But you just got to work that bit harder when we're in a rut and when we get a goal and we just we just look after it and manage it. And yeah, I'm ever so pleased the boys just stuck to the task. Yeah. Just doesn't seem like we've got that little bit of luck at the minute. And after the goal we conceded in the ninety seventh minute the other day, that, that that luck doesn't seem to be on our side at the minute. We we made a pack, oh, we had two options. I give them two options in change and we can either you know, we can sulk and we have our heads down and just jack it in as it were, just see the games out. Or we make a pact not to speak about nothing and just aim for nine points. If we can get nine points, whether we win it or whether we don't, we've, you know, we've, we've done what we asked. You know, we've stuck together and we, you, everyone's going to lose games. I think we're just more gutted about how we've lost the games and in the manner. So that, that's just something sometimes you just, like you say, you can't, you can't even cope them situations with the errors we've made. It's just one of them things. It's, uh, it's heartbreaking in a way after the season we've had, but what's meant to be will be. Jelly. Try to feed one through. And a slip and a chance for Russell. And he slides it past the keeper and it's a goal for Arundel. 1-0 on the break from the corner. You could see it was happening. He showed composure and he put the ball in the back of the net, slotted calmly past Hayburn. And the opening goal on the break. It's not the scoreline Shoreham needed or wanted. It's Arundel 1, Shoreham 0. Yeah, it's been a good season. Obviously, we're really, really disappointed today. You know, Arundel have done a job. They've, you know, they've set up to make it hard and they've got a goal from another mistake from us. It's tough to take, tough to take. But we weren't good enough today. We didn't play in behind. Didn't pass the ball well enough. Looked like a hot potato at times. Yeah, just... I don't really got it struggled. We just spoke over there. We uh, don't know. We're deflated right now. Really deflated. But I don't know, you can't lose seven games and expect to win the league or whatever it is. Eight games. Do you know what I mean? That's my opinion. It's harsh, but it's the truth. Despite that defeat, a technicality with the players' registration meant that Haywards Heath Town were deducted nine points, which effectively handed the title to Shoreham. We hope you've enjoyed this look back on last season. This season's already started very brightly with some outstanding games and fantastic goals. Be sure to tune in to Latest TV at 7pm on a Monday night to catch the best that the non-league has to offer.